SMVK Jain, Chief Guest for the Inauguration, Professor Saurav Pal, Director, Indian Institute of Science, Education and Research, Kolkata, Sri Hemant Das, ACS, Secretary, Department of Science and Technology, Government of Assam, Dr. Aurul Kumar Mishra, Director, Assam Science, Technology and Environment Council, Government of Assam, Professor Ramesh Samradeka, Dean School of Sciences and Chairperson Organizing Committee, esteemed deans, registrar Dr. Virendas, faculty members, invited dignitaries, and participants from various institutes across Assam, and dear members of audience. I, on behalf of the organizing committee, warmly welcome you all to the inaugural ceremony of Assam Science Festival jointly organized by ASTEC and Tejpur University under the aegis of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of Assam. The Assam Science, Technology and Environment Council was constituted in the year 1986-87 as an autonomous council of the Department of Science and Technology, Government of Assam, with an aim to implement several programs in the sector of science and technology, remote sensing, energy, and environment as an institutional organization of the department. Since its inception, ASTEC has been working relentlessly for the purpose of science and technology in Assam. And one of the brightest stars of all its project is the Assam Science Festival. Assam Science Festival was initiated in the year 2017 with the primary objective to expose and acquaint people about the latest development in the field of science and technology, to sensitize young minds towards scientific pursuits and the need for a vibrant and healthy mind and body, to motivate the young minds to pursue science as a career or a profession. Tejpur University is more than privileged to host Assam Science Festival 2019 along with ASTEC and strive towards strengthening science, technology and innovative activities in Assam. To briefly apprise you about the Assam Science Festival, apart from the exhibition stalls, a host of other scientific activities of varied nature including science lecture, scientific experiment demonstration, research poster display, scientific art competition, sky observation, mobile planetarium, science quiz, wildlife photography will also be organized for the participants. The purpose of the fest is to showcase science, technology and innovative activities of various institutes. Hence, prestigious institutes like Lokopya Gopinath Bodoloi Regional Institute of Mental Health, CSIRNAST, Assam Science Society, Institute of Advanced Study in Science and Technology, Northeastern Space Application Center, Assam Energy Development Agency, ASTEC, Kajiroma University, Assam Downtown University, Aranya, Bharat Jan Sang, Vigyan Jatha, etc., along with Tejpur University, will be showcasing their research and innovation activities in the festival. And one major delight of the festival will be the Aryabhatta Science Centre located in each districts of Assam, where two best school students' projects will be displayed in the exhibition. Therefore, we are really hopeful, assured and confident that Assam Science Fest would bring in some remarkable changes in the science and technological arena of Assam. With that positive note, we shall now begin with the inauguration program. May I now humbly request Professor V.K. Jain, Professor Saurabh Pal, Mr. Hamen Das, Dr. Urukh Kumar Mishra, and Professor Ramesh Samradeka to kindly take their seats on the dais. Sir, please. Thank you, sir. May I now call upon Professor Ramesh Samradeka, Chairperson Organizing Committee, to deliver the welcome address. Sir, please. Good afternoon, everyone. 
uh, respected Vice Chancellor Professor V K Jain, uh, Secretary Government of Assam uh, Sri Hemant Das, uh, Sri Guest of today's function Professor uh, Sourabhai, uh, Director Estate uh, Dr. Arup Kumar Misra. Deans of various schools uh, of Tezpur University, Registrar uh, Birendas, who is instrumental for organizing this uh, festival at Tezpur University, heads of different departments of Tezpur University, controller of examination, Dr. Birendas, participants from various school colleges, universities and institutes of Assam, my dear student friend and ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to welcome you all to this prestigious three days festival, the Assam Science Festival 2019. <coughs> uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, several participants from various organizations and I am also very much thankful to uh, Professor Swarov Pal, who has accepted our invitation in a very short notice. I, and this kind of festival is very, very essential for popularizing science. And the motto of this uh, festival uh, is to showcase uh, science activities to attract the young participants. Uh, towards science. Actually, we are uh, we should be very proud that uh, first PhD from uh, Assam is a scientist, and he happens to be the first chemist to uh, publish a research article in, in India. So he is uh, Dr. Radhikaram Jagyapukon, who did. PhD in Heidelberg University in the year. Namaskar. Very good afternoon to all distinguished participants in this August gathering. No doubt it's not a very big gathering, but this is how normally a three day event starts. A lot of people have traveled today morning to the Hispur University. A lot of children are still on the verge of settling down. So Subsequently, we will be able to see a lot of participation in the other programs, I'm sure. Uh, actually, the cultural officer of this university, Bhopali Kakoti, has made my job much easier. So, uh, it is basically in the year 2016 towards the end. If I remember correctly, my colleague Ranjit is here. Around Durga Puja, there was a review meeting in Chief Minister's chamber in this school. The Honorable Chief Minister started taking stock of different departments. Uh, they had come to power in the month of uh, probably May, May, yes, 16, and then around October they called us. And uh, at the very outset, he told me that uh, I know what Aztec and Aida is doing. I appreciate you. I know you for many years since our student days, we know each other. But the point I'm trying to make is science has not become a desirable sort of profession or career for maximum children because they fear it. Children should come and open their mouth in awe. Yet, Iman was to us, oh, Amiza, oh, big young town, big young town, and one hoy, yet, A was to go to us. Artificial intelligence, robotics, big data, cloud computing, and other people are opposed to us. Haran, Tarapa, and the people. So, you try to make something. Of a festival like I have one eye. 
अपन लोग कोड़ी जैसे चिल्ड्रन साइंस कॉम्युनिटी अदर प्रोग्राम्स ये बिल डूइंग तो अमी को ठीक है सर दिस योर डिजायर डेफिनेटली विल ट्राई अमी सस्ता कोड़ी कर लाए उदिन फोर फाइव मंथ्स प्राय सेवेंटी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन सॉल्व बड़ा कैटरी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम अहमदाबाद टू मुंबई टू दिल्ली टू कोलकाता गोहरी तो असी है अमोस सेवेंटी स्टॉल्स वेर देयर इन टू ह्यूज हैंगर्स इन सॉन्गरेव कलाक्षेत्र पंजाब और इंडिया हाथी वेर ऑन द ट्वेंटी सेवेंथ द साइंस फेस्टिवल स्टार्ट फेब्रुअरी अमार उद्देश्य � Remembering Sir C. B. Raman's historic Raman effect discovery, I am here to commemorate Puri. And here the one, a summer first science state science award to me. In a December cabinet meeting, the cabinet had cleared lifetime achievement award in science, young scientist award within 35 years less age, and organisation which is involved in science communication and popularisation. Tender prize for all time to come. Assam government did. I am approved for it. We got the funds, we got everything. Posthumously, Dhiripon as the father of rice research in Asia. Many new varieties he had developed. He was in Manila, rice research institute, Philippines. And he has developed, he was a vice chancellor of agriculture at Johar also. Second year, last year, we had given this award to another very famous plasma physicist, honorable vice chancellor, might have heard about him, Professor Harbishwar Bujarbogu. Founder of the IPP in Guwahati. And this year, recently, on 28 February, we gave this Lifetime Achievement Award to another very worthy son of Assam, Homer Juggu Hantan, Dr. Bhupanar Abdushan, another Bhatmagar awardee. Amitav Jalu, because of the dipole climate theory. Indian Ocean has got a role to play in the monsoon of India. It is not Arabian Sea and Bay of Bengal alone. Indian Ocean also plays a role. पठाम बड़ा जब निकला नहीं कुछ लेते हैं वहाँ लोग हमारे काम का नुकसान होता है इसलिए सो अमी ऐसा क्या होना है आप बड़ी बात दीज़ आर ऑल ऑफ शूट ऑफ ऑफ शूट ऑफ साइंस फेस्टिवल अमर जैसे साइंस फेस्टिवल पति बोले लोग ने देखा होले आवर मिनिस्टर चीफ मिनिस्टर टू ऑल द इनिशिएटिव कुरुप्ती � whether we have been able to do so? Answer is both yes and no. Sometimes the festivals or festivities, they become more gayful, more traditional types, and we lose the basic principle. It normally happens when you organize these festivals outside the ambits of academic institutions of this. So this time, under different, different circumstances, when we came to finally know in this month beginning, that 115 people have been deployed by government to work for the elections in Honipur district. I telephoned the DC of Honipur and said, Sir, we want to hold with you. We have a tie-up with you last year only with the tie-up. What to do? He says, please, we cannot do it before election results are declared. You will not believe. Immediately, we discussed the matter. My colleagues in the department, Kimya Changsan and Amarali Bhatshah are sitting here. I talked to them over telephone and I telephoned Dr. Biren Nas. Biren happens to be like my younger brother. He was doing his MSc in Guwahati University when I was already a lecturer of Assam Engineering College and staying in the campus. Biren, Poisa Ase, Sob Ase, I mean, for reading all models, guidelines, in Tales to University, can you hold something? Homer Ase Kedin, Eghara Baladin. 11th of March, money was transferred from DC office to the university. And today you see 60 stalls, all these exhibits, and wonderful arrangement for all the guests to stay and come. This is possible because of this test for university. This university in no time has gone up the ladder and become one of the prime institutions in the country. सुरंगों बोए सुनाओ पर 94 पर एक आनंद बोए तो लाए आज ही जीतू पंजार एक हम विषय बदल रहा है इसे तो वो ना क्या कल्पना हो पड़ी बनवाया है यार पर जीपुर रिसर्च पेपर यार पर जीपुर काम का सोलिया से यार जीत होना मानो ये फैकल्टी ज्वाइन करें से हंसा के अमार भाल लगे से डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ साइंस निकालने 
আমি কথা বলছো আমার সেক্রেটারি দাস সারের লগত উই আর অল ভেরি হ্যাপি অ্যান্ড ভেরি প্রাউড দ্যাট আওয়ার সেকেন্ড ফেস্টিভেল ইজ বিং হোস্টেড বাই তেজপুর ইউনিভার্সিটি এন্ড আই থিঙ্ক ইউ সেট এ নিউ স্ট্যান্ডার্ড তেওঁলোকে তেওঁলোকৰ নিজৰ যিটো তেওঁলোকৰ আছে নেটৱৰ্ক দ্যাট দে হেভ ইউজ এণ্ড ইউ সি ফ্ৰম টুডে থ্ৰী থাৰ্টি ৰাই ফ্ৰম ডক্টৰ পানল গোস্বামী ডুইং কেমেষ্ট্ৰি ফান উইথ ইউ টিল টুৱেণ্টি ফিফ্থ আফটাৰনুন ইউ উইল সি হাউ চাইন্স শ্বুড বি লাৰ্ণ হাউ চাইন্স শ্বুড বি টট ওৰে জীৱন আমি কৈ আহিছো ল'ৰা ছোৱালী সমূহক বিজ্ঞান মানে চাইন্স ইজ নট হিষ্ট্ৰি নট লিটাৰেচাৰ ইউ কেন ৰাইট এভ্ৰিথিং ইন দা ব্লেক বৰ্ড এণ্ড টেল সামথিং ওৰেলি ইউ শুড টিচিং বৰ্টি ইন দা ক্লাছৰুম টেক देम টু দা গার্ডেন সো ইফ দ্যাট ইজ দা ট্রুথ ইন সাইন্স টিচিং দিস সাইন্স ফেস্টিভাল বেসিক্যালি এইজ এ দ্যাট সর্ট অফ অ্যাটমোস্ফিয়ার হোয়ার ফ্রম দা ফোর ওয়ালস অফ দা ক্লাছৰুম উই কাম আউট এণ্ড উই হ্যাভ এন এমবিয়েন্স হোয়ার চিলড্রেন স্টার্ট লাভিং সাইন্স ডোন্ট রান অ্যাওয়ে ফ্রম সাইন্স আজি সবাই খুব ভাল পায় এটা খাব আহিব ইফ ইউ আজ দেন প্রাইভেটলি মেট্রিক পাস করে কি পড়িবা সাইন্স নপড়ে বলি কো বিকজ সাইন্স হ্যাজ অলরেডি ক্রিয়েটেড সাম সর্ট অফ নেগেটিভ ইমপ্যাক্ট অন মেনি পিপলস মাইন্ড ইজ এ ফ্যাক্ট বহুত ভালো ভালো কলেজ ইউনিভার্সিটি সেকেন্ড টাইম থার্ড টাইম এড দিব লাগে দ্যাট উইল বি অ্যাডভার্টাইজমেন্ট आवर वाइस ऑनर वाइस चांसलर इज फ्रॉम जेएनयू ही नोस द कंडीशन ऑफ दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी दे पुट अ कट ऑफ ऑफ 99.9% इनिशियली देन 4 5 6 7 लिस्ट हैव टू बी गिवन बिकॉज़ देयर नो टेकर्स many good colleges are looking for talented people but there are no takers the university might be an exception but in many universities the graph is coming down thank god because of inspire a program called inspire a program called mana a program called atal tinkering lab in school aur bahut program bharat sarkar under mhrd dsc etc ji bol ami indirectly aspect jorito directly jorito ei program gulor karane aji চন্দ্রশেখর in the name of UK or US, gone out from here. So, dear children, friends, more and more happy from here, you would have said, you can get your project in the future, and you will have to go back. If you want to solve your different problems, which we are facing in the 21st century, we have to take science and technology very seriously. It is science and technology, the whole thing is science, technology, innovation. No one speaks only ST, it's STI. Science, technology, innovation, and bhavan. So you have to take up this challenge. We are just the facilitator. I mean, I'm doing Odisha. Universities, councils, departments will do the job, give you the support, give you the money, send you wherever you want. Honorable Chief Minister, I'm not going to be a pastor. I mean, prize is there. So it's a science day award. When he goes to a pastor, he will be 5th March. In Khana Pada, he says, So what are you going to do with this? অসমত যিব লড়া ছিল আজপত্র এবার প্রাইজ পালে ফার্স্ট সেকেন্ড প্রাইজ ইউ সেন্ড এম ফর এক্সপ্লোজার ট্রিপ টু অল প্লেসেস অফ ইন্ডিয়া যান জায়গা আছে যে আগে পয়সা পাই নেই সেন্ড দেম বাই এরোপ্লেন শো দেম হোয়াট ইজ আইসা শো দেম হোয়াট ইজ সাইন্স সিটি কলকাতা শো দেম হোয়াট ইজ সাইন্স সিটি আহমেদাবাদ বার্ড ইসরো এটসেট্রা এটসেট্রা হোয়াট এভার ইজ পসিবল সো উইল বি ওয়ার্কিং অন দ্যাট নাও বিকজ আফটার দ্যাট ডে উই আর বিজি উইথ ভেরিয়াস প্রোগ্রামস এন্ড দিস ইজ দ্য এন্ড অফ দ্য মেজর প্রোগ্রামস দিস ইয়ার we will take up the issue very soon and i hope that with all this new ways of teaching and learning new exposure outside assam exposure etc etc my state assam or khomor rasali ako upor jabo ako upor dhibo bharat ko sathi nobor khomor khomor man asile 5 number in the index of development and in the index of per capita income assam was number 5 on 15th of august 1947 now we are about 18 19 তোমার কি হেই 14 15 পজিশন মাইনাস করে তাহলে ইউ হ্যাভ টু কাম ব্যাক টু ফিফথ अगेन ইফ ইউ ক্যান ডু ইট আই উইল থিং आवर এফোর্টস আর सक्सेसफुल বেস্ট উইশেস টু সাইন্স ফেস্টিভাল 2019 এন্ড থ্যাঙ্কস फ्रॉम মাই সাইড টু প্রফেসর বি কে জয় এন্ড হিজ এন্টায়ার টিম অফ ইউনিভার্সিটি ফর ওপেনিং देयर হোমস এন্ড হার্টস আমার ঘর বুল আর অন্তর বুল লাগে আমার কানে খুলে দিস নেক্সট থ্রি ডেজ উই হ্যাভ টু জাস্ট দ্যাট সাহ Dr. Mishra, Prof. Dekha, my colleagues in the administration, Dr. Das, Prof. 
जयकार की ओर स्टूडेंट प्रोफेसर बरवा प्रोफेसर सरकार कंट्रोलर ऑफ एग्जामिनेशन डॉक्टर बराल डिस्ट्रीब्यूट फैकल्टी मेंबर्स एस टीम गेस्ट एंड आई सी बी ओ एन मेंबर्स ऑल्सो हियर डियर स्टूडेंट्स एंड मीडिया फ्रेंड्स is such an honor to be part of this inaugural function and i must say a big thank you to astec for giving us this opportunity to host this event dr nupali kashyap uh, and uh, dr mishra have told you about the basic premise behind organizing this this event that is to not only sensitize our young minds about the achievements of this country in various fields of science and technology but uh, equally importantly to entice them to encourage them take up science as a career you would agree with me that uh, our country is poised for much bigger things and uh, in order that we are counted as a nation of some consequence of some relevance i think it is important that our human resource is a quality human resource which can contribute to the knowledge economy not only of this country but i think for the world as a whole in a meaningful manner you are also i would like to remind my young friends you are also mindful of the fact that at the time of independence the science and technology infrastructure was absolutely minimal there were hardly any institutions on 20 odd universities and uh, not a single technology institute was the name at that point of time so the challenge or the challenges before the government then were huge our country was also having this huge problem of dogmatic beliefs displaced beliefs myths poverty and so on you know it was very difficult we had a lot of social issues too so to build a scientific temple that was a huge challenge and i think the success of governments in this country have done us proud that they gave us uh, they gave so much importance to building institutions universities iits iisers and so on and so forth so now that we have a critical mass we have a critical mass of people who are enrolled in our high education institutions what we need to do is to go one level up be counted as i said in the beginning be relevant in the scientific community of the world the challenge before the young generation is huge is huge because you are the expectations of the country are that much more from you compared to our times you are supposed to be not only generators of knowledge but also you are supposed to be problem solvers there are myriad problems in this country practically every sector of your economy if you look at you you you, you have challenges so i don't envy the younger generation these days because the expectations are too high we are it or space or uh, in healthcare sector and what have you 
because some of the statistics which is in public domain is not very friendly. Just two days back, I think some of you must have read in the newspapers that for every hundred jobs in IT sector in 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 US, there are hundred applicants, let's say, for IT jobs in US. Only 19 are able to write codes. In India, although we we are given this impression that we are one of the leading IT nations. Our statistics is that is really low. Only four people can write that code. Similarly, another statistics, which is also not very threatening, 89% of our engineers are unemployable for the kind of job requirements which you have in the field of AI or machine learning or data science or whatever. So we, even as administrators in the university system, we are also concerned about the quality of higher education we are imparting to our young ones. This is also a challenge for the administrators. Educational administrators are also facing this challenge because we are also under public scrutiny. What kind of human resource you are producing from, from the university system or from IIT or from ISIS? Because if I mention the knowledge economy index, which is somewhere around 3, 3.5 or something like that, only 10 point scale, which is additionally low. Our innovation standing in, in the world has improved a bit. I think we are somewhere around 57 or 60, something like that. I think we have made a jump of about 24 or 25 uh, positions. So we are at the moment at 57, but 57 is not something to gloat about. So we are very low in that innovation. And uh, for the benefit of some of the young minds who are present here, what goes into deciding the knowledge economy index? Where our country is so low? These are the four, four currencies. One is education. One is innovation. And then you have ICT. Education, innovation, ICT. And then, of course, economic parameters, which go into deciding the knowledge economy index. But the most crucial out of all these three or four currencies is the, or rather two of them, in fact, education and innovation. And that's where the role of our faculty and our research students and the students who are going to take up science and technology as a career, I think the challenge is before all of us. The state of Assam, has produced some very outstanding scientists, and a couple of them I know personally. In fact, one of the professors you, Dr. Mishra, you probably forgot, is Dheeraj Bora. Dheeraj Bora is a very well-known plasma physicist, internationally well-known plasma physicist. Uh, and of course, you mentioned whether Bora had happened to know both of them because at one point of time I was also practicing plasma physics. Uh, yes, so the Assam has a very strong tradition of producing some outstanding uh, scientists and I see no reason why our younger generation which is uh, present here uh, cannot live up to the, the reputation of those names. With these words and uh, hoping that uh, not only our this young generation, but I think the generation in the entire country, the younger generation in the entire country, takes the country forward to another level. As I said, we have a critical mass. At the time of independence, we didn't have a critical mass. We have 800 plus institutions in this country now. 
some 42 or 43 central universities, so many IITs and so on. The government has invested an enormous amount of money. So I think the country uh, is looking forward to the younger generation to deliver. And believe you me, there is no greater satisfaction when you publish a research article or you have a patent to your name or you uh, have done something which is, which is adding to the new knowledge. No amount of money can buy that kind of happiness and satisfaction. So I would uh, really urge the younger generation to take science as a career, uh, leading as a career, and uh, do the country proud. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your encouraging and illuminating words. Your words will definitely channelize the young minds with more scientific outlook. And then thus, ACS, second. Chairman of the Energy Committee, Professor R.C. Lenka, my colleague, Dr. Kumar Vishra, distinguished guest in front of me, teachers of this university, faculty members of this university, other officials of this university, all members of the organizing committee, and my dear students. This school, the cultural capital of Assam, has popularly known. Kupen Hazirika, the famous music composer, the legendary figure, passed his childhood in this school. Kalagiru Vishnu Prasatrava, against whose name this auditorium has been named, hails from this poor. Pani Sharma, who is called Matasujya, hails from this poor. This poor has a great tradition of culture. Jyotipsa Ragarwala spent his whole life almost in Jyoti Varati in Tespur. Sarveshwar Goswami, Nippon Goswami, whoever you say, all legendary figures, renowned figures are from Tespur. Artumalu, Satra Satri Hakal Ji Hakal Bahira Prahisa Tespur Ale. Tespur Ale Yutijjat Mahuka Nishabhi Utsahe Tukurpo. Definitely the tradition the rich culture of this place definitely inspired. Pupenda said, Hasipate Mahadibo, Sikuni Akadibo, Rongare Milibo Duar, Homaze Kabutibo, Mohan Manamata, Big Kanya Nibosua. The old manuscript will give us the language, the fruit will give us the hope. Rangar will open new door. Hasipate Bhakadipo Sipuni Akadipo Rangar will be able to work. Hamaze Havotipo Mohanu Manavata, the society will embrace humanism and science will create a new wave. Why Bupenda call? Why did Bupenda call? Vigyana and Ipazwar. The importance of that line, particular that line, Vigyan and Yugoswara. A lie in the fact that our life starts with science only, though we fear about science, but our life starts with science only. Our very birth is basically a scientific mechanism. You can go out of that way. If you know about the birth cycle, you know how science acts. After our birth, our parents take care of us. If not scientifically, then we may have stunted children 
we may have malnourished Swiss children, we may have underweight children. So we are to develop a scientific temperament with our lifestyle itself. I mean, if you have a lot of people who are living in the world, I mean, if you have a lot of people who are living in the world, I mean, if you have a lot of people who are living in the world, I mean, if you have a lot of people if science is so interrelated with the life of the human beings, then where do fear lies? Why do we fear science? When we start our morning, we take the toothbrush, toothpaste, we always put it this way, that it does not go beyond the toothbrushes of the area. It remains within that area. We know about science, therefore we put that much of pressure on it. That's why Calculation of time is science. When you go home, so you start going to school, you wear your clothes, shoes, all are made of science. You walk to the school. Newton's law, law of gravity. You remain on earth. That is the truth. All are the people who are in the world. Go into us. All are the people who are in the world. Some way the fiction has been hampered. Fiction with art. These are all science. So we are to promote science. We are to create a scientific atmosphere. And science and technology department, as secretary of the department, I must say that we have been doing many things, but as the famous poet said, ye mice to go before we sleep. Yet we have to mice to go. We have to create scientific atmosphere. We have only one Planetarium in Guwahati for creating atmosphere, scientific atmosphere. The government is now planning to establish, setting up nine planetariums in the state. We are going to set up one, the most modernized science city in Guwahati, near Guwahati. It is near Sonaku. Land has been taken. Government of India has cleared the project, approach road has started, and the final startup of the project will part as begin in the month of May or June, just after the election. We are in a position to start it, but due to declaration of uh, parliamentary election as well as enforcement of model code of conduct, we have not been able to do so. So we are going to establish 33 district science centers in all district headquarters of the state. We don't have now. We have so many programs. Already Dr. Mishra has said that the Honorable Chief Minister is very keen to spread scientific temperament among the masses, among the students. So he has created one he has branded one program named as Manuhe Manuhar Bhavet. Thus to create scientific aptitude, spreading scientific knowledge, awareness about social awareness. Manuhe Manuhar Bhavet, this program was started last year and it got much popularity. Now we have 
Guwahati Biotech Park, one of its best kind in the country. Biotech Park, we have Biotech Council also, we have biotech, Biotechnology Policy also. Now we are moving, perhaps in the right direction, but we are only bureaucrats. We are only bureaucrats. We have limitations. This school university, I must acknowledge their contribution towards spreading of science. But I would like to request Honorable Presidential Sir to extend his helping hands to Science and Technology Department, Government of Assam, for spreading science and technology in Assam, so that though we are now leveraging the existing areas, yet we are to identify the potential areas of research and development. It's not our cup of tea. To identify the potentialities or potential areas of research and development is not cup of our tea. We admit it. You are to guide us. You all people are to guide us. I am very happy. In that, in fact, we are in debt to Tespur University that within a very short time, Tespur University has shown the courage to hold this state science festival. Indeed, very courageous. I am not blaming anyone. I am not blaming anyone. But it was to be held one and a half year back. We have deposited funds to district administration already. One year back, one year back we had given fund to district administration. They are busy with their own business, NRC was going on at that time. That's why I am not blaming anyone. NRC was fully going on, now election is going on, as well as NRC is going on, everybody is busy. I have come to know that most of the officials, most of the professors, assistant professors have been requisition for election duty. It's a national duty, we'll have to do that. But under that circumstance, Telstra University has come perhaps within a, uh, less than 15 days. Less than 15 days they have come to all this one. Otherwise, for the second year also, we would have failed to host it. Hold the science festival. But we were determined at this time that anyhow we will hold the science festival before 31st months at any cost. And so, Test University, sir, we will get to you. We have, I am also. The Secretary of Social Welfare, and sir, if you remember, I had written a letter to you to allow your three professors to participate in the TIO seminar regarding diversification of foods, nutritional food. And uh, the school university's food and technology department is also helping us in case of social welfare department also. Uh, we have a very good relation with this university now. A few minutes back, say half an hour back or one hour back, we had a talk with Dr. Alok Buraguhai, from Ali, who was here. We had a talk with him. He assured us to guide us in spreading and formulating policies, spreading scientific knowledge and formulating state policies for that. We have to popularize the indigenous technologies. I had a talk with Assam Agriculture University a few days back regarding diversification of foods. Bhim Kol. Bhim Kol or Guril Pura, Jitu Powder Hipple, Batsar Karone, Kesuwar Karone, Jitu Iman Bisi, it is nutritional. 
that any good company can compete with Bhimto's powder. It has been proved by SMI Medical University. Now we have to promote it. It is our indigenous technology. We have to promote the indigenous technologies also. At the time of Ahom Kingdom, Rangar was built, Tolapalgara was built, seven story building at that time, three stories under the art. It's a great technology. We had that, we had that tradition. We are having that tradition. So, this university, other universities, some agriculture universities, I request, my earnest request to them, please come forward, help science and technology department in formulating state policies for further development of science and technology in Assam. And uh, definitely, we are running a welfare state. And our prime objective is for the development of masses, common people. Let us use the, let us use science and technology as one of the tools for socio-economic development. If we get the food diversification, if we know about the food values of the local foods, I told about just, I told about Dr. Bhuragamai sir, he was telling this, that we have to popularize the indigenous foods. We all take apples, he, it is his language, we all take apples from market, but we don't take guava from our back court here. Pispal or Sutal or Lagitoka, Maduriam Jupar Brahmi, Maduriam Singh Nakham, Bajar or Brahmi, Apelano. Indigenous fruits are to be popularized. So I won't take much time. I again reiterate our thanks to this university, to the organizing committee, to the participants. To Malako Kami, Anamizu Naisu. Bahut Kora Sali Aisa, Bahiro Tassa, Mijanisu, Gompaisu. Kira Baki Boru Kajjao Che, Anduri Katale Angkho Kura Angkho Kura. Hiki Boru Sista Kura. Proud. And several speakers have said, why? And what is the challenge? If you look at science, it's probably not the oldest profession. It's an old profession. But not that old. There are many other professions like religion, even philosophy, medical, just medical, without science background, predates the beginning of science. Science is a very, very, in that sense, it's a newer profession, I would say. Yet, if you look at, at, at our time, science is also very old. A few thousand years back, people were doing science. We had Aristotle, the Greek philosopher, the Indian scientist. Many of those, probably in the Vedas, eras, lost. But if you look at the modern science, it's still much younger. The modern science essentially is a science where you ask questions, you look at data, you feel by what we call pancha indriya, we see, you feel, you hear, and you gather information and data, try to systematize the data, that is very, very important. The collection of data alone is not enough to systematize the data. And then comes the modern science where you try to understand the data. Initially, when science started, it was a collection of data. Then we used to try to systematize. And then the modern science tried to understand why. Why does something happen the way it happens? And after understanding, can you predict what will happen? That is how the science is trying to move. If you look at the Archimedes from the time that I can say that science was almost becoming modern, 
the discovery of Archimedes was actually not because Archimedes was thinking. It was more of a challenge to him. Because the king, I hope all of you know the story, the king gave a challenge to him whether the goldsmith is cheating him or not. So he had to find the density of the material, an irregular substance, not a regular substance. So he has to find the volume. And then, of course, he suddenly found it was kind of an accidental discovery. He was thinking. But more, I would say, it was a discovery which was a necessity driven discovery. Because somebody said it, you must do, and then he started thinking how to do it, and it came because of necessity. In fact, there are many examples in science where the innovations have come because of necessity. There are many examples where innovations have come because of accident. In fact, the first discovery of the microorganisms was actually accidental. I don't know if many of you know, it was actually a lens grinder, a Dutch lens, lens grinder, Anton, Anton Van, I don't exactly remember the name, who actually discovered the microorganisms because he saw something to the lens. He, he was not a scientist. There are discoveries of urea. Many of you know chemistry, that the urea was discovered by accident. You didn't want to do. Many experiments you didn't want to do, suddenly you saw something and then you call people, what is happening? And you find something. Sometimes discoveries come out of dream. One example is a structure of benzene in chemistry where Kekule had a dream that the snake is seizing its own tail. And then he suddenly realized, oh my God, there is possibility of ring structures. Of course, science comes out of curiosity. Isaac Newton, no better example I can give than Isaac Newton, who suddenly saw the apple falling downwards and started thinking. But the important point is that it's very hard to say how, and that is one of the reasons of promoting science, that is one of the challenges of promoting science. It's very hard to say how discoveries are made. If I could educate in an educational institution how to do research, my job would have been over. Unfortunately, there is no safety. That is what I'm trying to first say. I also tell people, do not forget your dreams. Your early morning dream may come true. Just like Kekule dreamt, dreams are very important. Do you dream science? You may not dream science. You may dream something very abstract from which a scientific discovery may originate. So the challenge, and I think Professor Jane and somebody was telling that the challenge of educational institutions is how to educate. And this is a challenge because there is no set way to educate research, how to do research. You can educate, impart knowledge information, even an analysis of existing data, but that is not going to help to create new research. And this is where we have been extremely short in India in general. We have done very well in understanding somebody's work, analyzing, articulating and presenting, and then doing some advancement Based on that, we have been very good, but that's not original work. Original work, a game-changing work, where a game-changing thought is required, is something that we have not been able to do. Why? Because our curriculum in the institution is extremely set, in a set pattern, and it's very hard to instill a, a game-changing thoughts by set pattern. It is a job not only to be done by institution, but also by the society. Because the society teaches us to behave in a particular way. I must say this, it's very important. Society teaches children not to ask questions. Society teaches children 
not to ask questions to superiors, which includes teachers. And that is a sure way of killing science. Because a major part of scientific research is not to find a solution, but to ask the right questions. In fact, if I say so, asking the right question is doing the half of the science. The solution will come. We are not able to ask the right question simply because we are not trained from the school to think otherwise. To think other than what people have asked you to think. In fact, if you go to European civilization or the US, I mean, of course, they started from Europe in some way, the modern civilization, and I'm pretty sure it was there in India before, and that is exactly the point that we are discussing, what happened in the modern era. That we have stopped thinking in a completely interactive way a way which can actually make significant change. In fact, I remember I was attending one college or school program in the US. It is amazing actually in the US. One young student got up and asked very senior professor who was giving a talk, if all atoms were made of heavy negative charge and not the heavy positive charge like program, and there would be a light positive charge around it, which is like positron. What would have happened to the entire materials? Atoms would be still neutral. I was amazed at that question. Would the material world change? Imagine a class five, six, or seven student. Here you are not allowed to ask because they would never think atom could, could be anything else because it's already in the textbook. So one of the major things that I would suggest in any science festival is really to ask questions. And I must dare say the debate on quantum mechanics when it was unfolding. Albert Einstein was asking lots of questions, questioning quantum mechanics. I think those who are interested should read, if not understand quantum mechanics, should read the debate that happened. Well, Wolfgang Pauli had to tell Albert Einstein that, Mr. Einstein, would you please shut up? You are not understanding quantum mechanics. To a gathering, Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Niels Bohr, all were present. And Einstein said, yes, Mr. Pauli, I am stupid. I don't understand quantum mechanics. Imagine that coming from Albert Einstein. How many of us can say I am stupid? There is nothing called a stupid question. But we are always scared to ask questions because somebody will think it's a stupid question. The peer pressure is not at my level alone. Peer pressure, believe me, we don't understand, is at the level of children. A class 5 or class 6 student is worried about another student at his or her level, what, how they are commenting, and many parents do not realize. They think, what is there? It is a small thing. But it affects them in a way that it inhibits their growth. So you have to inculcate this belief that there is nothing called stupid question. And anybody who challenges such stupid question should be said so, that you can't challenge. Because everybody has the right to ask questions. I think we don't do that first. And that is one of the reasons that we have fallen backwards in the modern era. Even coming to eras which are much more recent, you look at the time when Ramanujan did work, C.V. Raman, S.M. Bose, Meghna Saha, J.C. Bose, so many great people. And actually we talked about the science that came from Assam 100 odd years back. We were still doing and leading something and I have always wondered what happened post-independence. Did we become very straight-jacketed in terms of discipline, in terms of British education? 
and hence forgot to ask questions. Have we become too disciplined in our education? Science, arts, commerce, and forgot that even there can be an interconnection between them. Forget about connection between physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics. If you look at people like Linus Pauli, even closer to our time, they were neither physicist, nor chemist, Faraday, some of the great minds who have done everything that they could do. If you look at Pauling's work, it's amazing. It impacts physics, chemistry, biology. Because original thinking, there is nothing called physics and mathematics, or chemist, or biologist. Whatever you can originate, you have a right to be there. But today, if I have MSc physics, it's very hard to get a job in the chemistry department in our Indian universities. Because the first question they will ask, can you teach chemistry? Can you teach one level of chemistry? It's not very difficult. Because what is required is to, is the same thing, is to make people think. Today in the world of Google, Mr. Google will give lots of information. So giving information is not our job. The kids are very smart. Connecting them, making them think of something beyond Google, something that does not exist, is our job. And I think we are not able to do because we are really too disciplined. Whereas we talk of interdisciplinary research, in education we are extremely disciplined. So even today we had problems. For example, in IISCR, when we started to give BSMS degree, initially we thought we will just give BSMS degree. Then people started asking questions, why will my kids get a job? Unless you brand them. Physics, chemistry, biology, then came the idea of major. Then came, okay, it's interdisciplinary, so let us have also a minor. So we give major in this, minor in this, to make things better. But I hope you understand what was the challenge. The challenge has been to balance our education with the needs of the research. And that is where we are failing. The government, many people say the government, government is doing a lot of things. It's, it, there is no point blaming the government because it's us. Finally, it's us. Remember the politics, the government, the bureaucracy, and of course the bench level scientists. These are the four arts. Politics and the government are often talking in this unison. Often, not always. Bureaucracy also can go with that. How do these arms manage the bench level science? How, how does the bench level scientist give feedback to these so that the science and technology policies come up in a way which inculcates this original thinking? And I think that is what Mr. Das was also referring. That they, they can do only so much. Just a few days back, I was in one of the convocations where our ex-president Pranam Mukherjee was chief guest. And I heard him before also. Again, he brought up a very uncomfortable question. Why is it that since 1930, we don't have Nobel Prize bioscientists working in India, completely working in India. At C.B. Raman, of course, many of you know about it, the Science Day is there. So I sometimes feel that this Science Day itself, 28 February, C.B. Raman, is becoming a cliche. I mean, if there are 15, 20 Nobel laureates, would you, would you still celebrate Science Day, because whose day will celebrate? Discoveries have taken place by so many people. I think I would be very happy when I don't have to say Science Day. Because every day is a Science Day. To be honest, I mean, it, it is a 24 by 7 job. 
And the society has to understand and respect that. And that does not happen in this country. Somebody talk to IT. IT is not science. IT is a service sector. And I think Professor Jane was actually mentioning that even in IT, how many new codes have been written by in India? You will say marginal. So we have become consumers of science and not the generator of science. We have become consumers of technology and not the generator of technology. So that is why India is prospering on what is called service sector. Service industry, there is a tremendous growth in India. And most of the money that has come, the richness that has come in the middle class and so on is because of the service sector. Please believe me. We are consuming cars. We are consuming mobiles. We are consuming computers. How much of the science behind each of these have been generated here? And that's the question that we have to ask. And that, that is what this festival should do. Ask tough questions. We have very often avoided tough questions and being happy at what it is. Today, DST has started many, many programs. In you know, KBPY, I think many of the children will certainly appear for the Kishore Vaikanik Post Language and a very good scholarship to get admission for the higher studies. Inspire program which gives fellowship to the children. It's amazing actually. There is no doubt of the government funding fellowships and which are not there during our time. We have faculty positions which are also inspired faculty. Ramanujan fellows, Ramanujan fellowship, Ramalinga Sama fellowship. Many schemes that the DST and SCRB have started. And each of them has a purpose. But even I know there are so much of frustrations among the people who are Ramanujan fellows. Ramalinga Sama fellows. But after five years they are not getting jobs. They are becoming unemployed. Many of them, I'm not saying all. So even the schemes are now undergoing severe thoughts at the highest circle. How can, how, how these schemes be reformed? There are a lot of projects which the MHRD has started, like Imprint. Many of you probably know. In fact, I personally have got an Imprint project. But this is to actually make a translation of science. To invite people from outside so that the foreign collaboration starts through the Gyan program. Again, many of you might have heard this program of Gyan, where we can invite a foreign professor to give it education. I think many university institutions should take advantage of that. There is a very recent program which has been started called Spark, which is also a foreign, a project mode where a foreign professor can come and spend a significant amount of time. Their students can also come to India. Only Indian PI students can go, but the PI cannot go. So it's other kind of mobility. Just like they have done in China, since so some such model and very heavy, very good remuneration to the foreign professor. I don't want to say how much is the money. It's a very, very remuneration. If you, if you take, I'm, I'm telling you, take to university. If you take advantage, I'm sure you know it. This part program, there are a lot of good people who are ready to come. All this is to change the scenario, to make the students think they can take a course, they can spend a longer period of time, the students can come, so you know how they work, their work culture. And I think that is what, to some extent, China has done. I would not say fully successfully, but they are trying to do. And I think the government is also looking at those kind of schemes. Very, and then there are lots of projects like Imprint, which are translational projects, which is very, very important. There is very recently another program, is, the call is coming in April, I can announce because I am chairman of one of the committee, that is called STARS, 
STARS, the scheme for translational and advanced research in science. The call is coming in April. Lot 250 crores the government has allocated to be given in six domain areas of physics, chemistry, biology, computer and data science, nano and art science. So there is no dearth of schemes. That is not the problem. And very easy to say, okay, money is not there. The real issue is somewhere else. That are you able to make original thinking just by giving money to not come? And that is where I feel our education has failed. The reason, I, the reason I'm saying I'm a little bit pain to say this is because I can't exactly pinpoint how it has failed. If you look at the classroom teaching, they are doing perfectly well. But why we have failed is at a more social level of making people, students ask tough questions, unorthodox questions, questions which will lead to something new. Whether physics, chemistry, biology, mathematics, I don't care. Think of something new, original thinking. I think that is why we are failing. It is not classroom teaching. Many people say, okay, some teachers are boring teachers, but that is there even abroad. All teachers are not good, I can tell you. That is really not the point. The point is something bigger, and that is where I think the science administrators, scientists, technologists, they have to address. If you look at even those days, Archimedes, he was, he was actually a mathematician. Many of you may know that he was one of the first to prove that the area of a circle is pi times radius square, pi r square. He was a mathematician. Newton was a mathematician, very famous Principia Mathematics. The entire integral and differential calculus started because of Isaac Newton. But he comes in physics textbooks because of his discovery. He didn't stop at mathematics. He started thinking. And I always wonder, Apple was always falling downwards. How come it took a Newton so many years after to think why is it falling downwards? Or did others think and did not find a solution? We don't know. That history is suddenly not, I, I, I'm unable to say. But it's very interesting to note also that the science moves in very, very different way. There is no set way, and again, when I started, I must end. There is no way to say how original discoveries can be made. You have to keep yourself alert of everything, including accidents. Many times accidents are ignored, but accidents must be recorded. A mis-experiment may be recorded. So I think it requires different kind of thoughts because we don't, don't record because we are expecting something. So we are, we are scared to even tell that we have got something wrong. Because people will tell us, oh, we are bad experimenters. But maybe you are not wrong. People have missed something and you got it under certain environment, certain conditions. And that may generate their thinking. So I think it's very hard to say how, why are we failing? I mean, we are failing. Are we failing? That's also very important to first, maybe somebody will agree, uh, not agree with me, that we are failing, we are doing very well. But clearly I can say not, not much of new science has come from India in at least last 100, 200 years, where textbooks write about Indian origin science. A few are there, I know, but not many. That's why I talked to Ramon S. N. Bose, Meghna Saha in the modern modern days. But they did, you know, S. N. Bose, when he did Bose statistics, I don't know how many of you know. His paper was rejected. It was not called Bose Einstein statistics. He just said how the quantum particles, because they're distinguishable, what should be the statistics. He did not understand its significance. He wrote to Albert Einstein. Einstein translated that paper in German and got it published in Jai State for Physics. And that is how the collaboration between Bose and Einstein started. And, and it's amazing in those era, S. N. Bose could write to Albert Einstein. Today I can imagine. 
How many of us will write and get a response? They used to get a letter. Because both translated many of Einstein's books or papers from Germany to English before. And those, those days of even letter writing. Or integrating literature, a literature person like Tagore, saying that there is a truth in quantum mechanics and writes a letter to Albert Einstein that maybe quantum mechanics is right in his own way. I think we are losing that, that leadership. A leadership which is thought leadership. I am positive that it was there in India, it is there in India. We must promote that. Of course, today it is very important that the science will work for society. So there are entrepreneurship, science translation, and many, many universities, institutions are doing what is called innovation center, incubation center. In fact, even in ISA Kolkata, we have started incubation center. We want to promote science to society. And I also say that many people feel that those who are doing fundamental science, oh, this is not good. Science application means it's a low level science. It's completely wrong. Best science with its applications will actually revolutionize things. And that is where one has to look at pasture thinking, the new pasture coordinate, which is high science and high application. Pasture did very good science and very good application. So I think it's very important that when you are talking about innovations, incubation centers today, we have to be careful. We should talk of deep innovation, which is basically high science-driven innovations. And these entrepreneurships are extremely important to the society, and we otherwise society will never support, and that is what will happen. The science has become only blue sky research, without even doing original work. So you, go, you don't do any original research, yet you don't contribute to society then obviously the support will vanish. And that is exactly what is happening. If we do such discoveries, which will shake the world, of course the politics, the government, the society will sit. Or we do something for the society. If we do neither, there is a big risk. Even though we have a lot of talent. And I, that this is not to question the talent. Because many of our people, when they go abroad in a different environment, are flourishing today. Who have done fantastic work. I mean, there are examples in all sectors where Indians have done fantastic in work. So I think with that thought, I would say that we have to introspect in this festival. And I'm very happy, as somebody said, that there's a rich tradition in Assam. Through this Assam Science Festival, we must remind ourselves, you must remind yourself, that was it the post-independent Assam that fell backwards? Or has it really fallen backwards? Is it just a cliche? Is the talent there? Or I believe it is the same everywhere. And you must bring the young people, and that is why the young people are very important who are coming here. I'm very happy, of course, that the Tejpur University has done such a wonderful job in a short period of time at the request of the Assam Science and Technology, the Department of Science and Technology, Government of Assam, holding this. And I see lots of pavilion. I, I, I can say that the exhibition is pavilion, there are many of them which they are organizing. And it is very, very important that everywhere, I again repeat, they should ask questions. Not just in classrooms, in exhibitions, posters, they should see why things are happening and begin to think. I think that is the first process where new science may be germinated. So we do not know, maybe a new science will be germinated here by some young person who is thinking right here in Tejpur University in this science festival. With this hope, and thanking the organizers for inviting me here, let me conclude my speech. Thank you very much.
Thank you so much for your vitalizing and pragmatic words, sir. I'm sure your words will definitely encourage the young minds to think and act differently and also instill in them that courage to quote-unquote ask questions. Thank you so much, sir. So, we are approaching towards the end of this inauguration ceremony. May I now request Dr. Sadhan Mahapatra, joint convener for Assam Science Festival 2019 to propose the vote of thanks. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Today I have been offered the pleasant task of offering the vote of thanks. It is well understood that this kind of event cannot be happened overnight and within a short period of time, less than two weeks. First of all, I would like to place on record our heartfelt thanks and gratitude to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Vinod Kumar Jain, for his constant support and the guidance to organize this program. Our deep sense of gratitude to the Chief Guest of the inaugural function, Professor Saurabh Paul, Director Aizar Kolkata, for sparing his time and being with us, and also for the enlightenment, the gathering which is valuable inputs, asks questions. We warmly acknowledge the gracious presence of Sri Hemen Das, SES, Secretary Department of Ass Science and Technology, Government of Assam, for his presence, and also enlighten the audience his way of thinking for the scientists and the young minds. I profoundly thank Caste, Government of Assam, led by their director, Dr. Varun Kumar Mishra, for entrusting the Kishpur University to host the Assam Science Festival 2019. Thank you so much, sir. I warmly thank Mr. Nuruddin Ahmed for the beautiful and meaningful venue preparation within this short period of time. My deep sense of gratitude to all the deans, heads of the department, faculty members, Register Dr. Viren Das, administrative staffs, and the students, volunteers, for directly or indirectly helping in making this fest happen at the campus. I thank all the participants, the young students who have come from all over the Asam to this university. I also thank the anchor for the today's program, Dr. Rupali Kassa, for hosting this inaugural session. Last but not the least, I thank the members of the audience for their kind presence and the cooperation. Thank you very much.